the go. This is Valley News Live 10 at 10. The first significant rainfall this season poured down throughout the valley, and it's expected to keep on coming. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. Large puddles are what's left behind for drivers from all the rain, but those puddles may only grow on Monday. Meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli joins us right away with what we can expect. Justin. And yeah, thank you, Krista. Good evening, everybody. Most of us saw some uh, significant rain out there for the day today, and it will continue. Let's get right to the radar out there. The uh, heaviest and steadiest rain now falling into the uh, Detroit Lakes area, just to the north of Fergus Falls. They've seen uh, a couple of inches. Some people reporting a few inches so far, and they're only going to get more as we go through time. We're seeing some rain just to the south of Fargo right now. Some thunder Thunderstorms down toward the uh, Sisseton area, but this is uh, where we were watching for the most thunderstorm activity. They do weaken as they approach North Dakota. We've also got some uh, thunder and lightning into Sargent County right now. These are non severe thunderstorms. This is what we have been seeing most of the day, and we have a significant batch of rain just to the north of Jamestown. Now, as we go through the next uh, day and a half or so, we're looking at a significant amount of rain. The yellows on this map. Uh, our one to two inch range, which is uh, what we're going to see by the time the system moves out overnight on Tuesday. The oranges, two to three inches, especially from Fargo out toward Detroit Lakes. So the uh, scattered showers are going to be possible as we go through the overnight period and beyond as temperatures stay into the low to mid 40s. And we're going to be a little breezy out there. So we'll tell you what to expect for your Monday and beyond coming up a little later on the newscast. Krista? On top of the 13th Avenue construction project already underway in Fargo, two more large projects will begin tomorrow morning, one in West Fargo and one in Moorhead. These will impact thousands of drivers. Valley News Team's Natalie Parsons has more on what you can expect on the road when you head out tomorrow. In Moorhead, you can already see orange cones for what seems like miles, and this is just the beginning of a four-phase project. It's horrible and very inconvenient, and it always gets in your way, especially when you're trying to get somewhere on time. Phase 1 will run through June and involves the construction of additional lanes on I-94, as well as widening Highway 75 from 22nd Avenue to 35th Avenue. Seems like it's going to be a long project and take forever. Both I-94 and Highway 75 will remain open during construction, but there will be delays with shoulder and lane closures until October. And then you have to worry about like people slowing and stopping and getting in accidents. Patients will not only be needed in Moorhead starting Monday, West Fargo will also have construction at 40th Avenue West. This is part of a two-phase project to change the current two lanes into a four-lane roadway. Phase 1 closures go from Cheyenne Street to 11th Street West, and Phase 2 goes from 11th Street to the Horace Diversion. We do have uh, a primary detour route established to get people down to 52nd Avenue and then over to Veterans Boulevard. There will also be detour routes for local traffic only. Phase 1 is expected to last until July, then Phase 2 will begin in August. People should still plan to be delayed in, in their cars and plan accordingly. In West Fargo, Natalie Parsons, Valley News Live. And you can wake up with the Valley today, tomorrow morning. To check out Christy Larson, she'll be at that Moorhead construction project, so be sure to wake up with the Valley today. And one man was arrested for leading police on a chase, riding his motorcycle while intoxicated and reaching speeds up to 140 miles per hour. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says a high-speed chase began just before 2 a.m. last night between Minto and Ardock on Highway 81. 26-year-old Andrew Flatten of Minto was clocked going 119 miles per hour in a 65. He fled from the trooper into Grand Forks County from Walsh County, reaching speeds of 140. The chase reached to Grand Forks and didn't end until Flatten lost control of his motorcycle going around 35 miles per hour, just east of Hatton on an uneven dirt road. He was taken to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. City of Fargo leaders, including commissioners and the mayor, are reacting to a controversial immigration award. It started as an application by a city intern that many leaders say they knew nothing about until we asked them. It's called the Gateway for Growth Award, and it gives funds to cities 
that the organization Partnership for a New American Economy considers inclusive to immigrants. The organization itself is considered to be controversial, as many of the donors to the project support an open borders policy for the United States. City leaders are now trying to figure out how an intern in Fargo's Community Development Office submitted the application without the knowledge of the commission. The invitation came into the community uh, uh, as part, I, I suppose, in association with Welcoming Week, welcome, our Welcoming America uh, designation. And uh, Christina was uh, asked to, to, uh, to, um, to, to submit a letter to participate. The intern also wrote that the city of Fargo has agreed to provide the full support and dedication to this project. Molly told Chris Berg on 630 POV that commissioners plan to sit down and discuss the award and the best way to move forward, but today said no date for the meeting has been set. Back in October, Valley News Live conducted a poll that showed the majority of people living in Cass and Clay counties do not support continued resettlement of refugees to the area. Classes canceled Monday at Midway Public School in Inkster, North Dakota, after a fire destroyed the shop building and caused heavy smoke damage throughout the rest of the school. The school is asking for volunteers to come out tomorrow morning at 8.45 to help clean. They'll be out there until 6 p.m. And if enough volunteers show up, school will open back up on Tuesday. More than 50 firefighters responded around noon Saturday and arrived to the shop building attached to Midway Public School on fire. It took over three hours for multiple agencies to put it out. No one was injured. It's becoming a growing epidemic across the country and one we've seen increase dramatically here in the Valley, fentanyl-laced heroin. Federal officials are expressing alarm about the growing number of overdoses and deaths from the powerful painkiller, which has long been used to lace heroin, but now is increasingly being taken on its own. Blake McCoy spoke with a Grand Forks family on their connection to this drug. He was the jokester. He was the life of the party. Evan Poitra was just 19 years old when his parents walked into his room in Grand Forks, North Dakota and found him lying face down on his bed. When I turned him over, he was already stiff and his eyes were open. It'll be something I'll never get out of my head. Evan's parents knew their son had been abusing marijuana and pain pills, but it was something else that killed Evan in July of 2014. I've never heard of the drug before until they told us what it was when uh, the officers came. This is fentanyl, an opiate up to 50 times more powerful than heroin, cheaper to make, more deadly, and now more in demand. It's become the focus of nationwide alerts from the CDC and DEA. Intended for a hospital setting to treat pain, fentanyl is increasingly being produced on the black market. And just this year, the CDC declared Ohio to be ground zero for fentanyl overdoses. The problem here in Cincinnati's Hamilton County is so bad, overdose deaths now outnumber car accident deaths and murders combined. Last year, the county reported 238 fentanyl-related deaths, a 153% increase from the year before. Newtown, Ohio, police chief Tom Sinan is leading a drug task force to combat the sudden rise. Often the drug dealers are one step ahead and we got to try to catch up a little bit. His detectives are finding fentanyl laced in heroin and given to unsuspecting users. Once hooked, users are increasingly seeking out fentanyl on its own. Here's the thing about drug dealers that's unfortunate. They're very good at knowing their customer and they're very good at marketing. In Chicago, a recent spike in fentanyl overdoses has prompted a public health warning. It's a time bomb. It's totally dangerous. And patients really are playing with death if they're using it um, out of the hospital setting. A fact Evan Poitra's parents know all too well. It is the very worst thing that a parent can ever go through. You're not supposed to bury your children. Blake McCoy, NBC News. We've covered the fentanyl-laced heroin cases all around the valley and the use of Narcan to save someone from an overdose. You can find those stories to learn more on valleynewslive.com.